Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I'm going to show you how I take this um, decorative lantern and turn it into an enclosure. Now I've always seen these enclosures in different places. I've seen them at Walmart, I've seen them at Target, I've seen them at Michaels, I think even Hobby Lobby carries them. And every time I see them I always think, you know, wow those would make a pretty cool enclosure. But they always have something about them that prevents me um, from turning it into an enclosure because when I look at them I'm, I'm looking for things that I could possibly alter or I'm looking for ways to make sure that the enclosure is secure and that things can't escape so there's always some kind of flaw that keeps me from doing that and uh, this particular one I happened to find at um, Walmart and it, I think it runs about $14 um, $14.95 maybe maybe $15 so um, <clears throat> When I saw this one, I thought, you know, this one I could probably do something. And there were certain things that that I had to think about before I could actually, you know, before I bought it and decided that, yeah, I could make an enclosure out of this. looking at this lantern one of the first things that I looked at was to make sure that the door would seal properly and this one you can see has a bit of a gap at the top but the gap is actually pretty nice and tight all the way around and um, that was definitely something that I had to look at to make sure that there was no possibility of escapes but you also kind of have to make sure that the door is on straight because some these things are cheaply constructed and sometimes they don't exactly put the doors on straight so this one looked like it had a nice even um evenly distributed door and the the gap around it was pretty even um another thing that i looked at was to make sure that it had some kind of mechanism to close it and this one does so the little door opens up and then it's got a locking me mechanism that latches pretty securely so i did like that about it so another thing that i paid close attention to this lantern was the fact that the top of it had screws on it so when i saw this i thought well i can probably take that off if i unscrew those screws and i think it's got eight screws on it so if i take that off i could probably put something in between to seal this off because there's a gap right here of course where anything could escape from but if I put maybe a screen mesh there um, I could possibly get away with sealing this off another thing that I paid close attention to was the um, inside of the of the lantern and from the inside you can tell that there's glass all the way around there is wood on the bottom and it's got a tin bottom right here so that's not exactly good for um, moisture of course so that would probably rust out maybe it's aluminum I'm not sure but the wood also would not exactly be good to get moist so I had to think about what would I do or what could I do to prevent that from getting moist and also from hold, for holding substrate so those were some things that I had to take careful consideration so what I ultimately decided was that I could silicone the bottom and uh, the edges and anywhere that the glass comes in contact with the wood at least to a certain point where it might pick up some moisture so i could completely seal that off with silicone so that i could put substrate there and not worried about that that moist substrate or any moisture in the substrate from damaging the wood or maybe even rusting out the bottom and so on so those are things that i had to think about so what i thought was maybe silicone and then of course maybe a piece of plexiglass around here that could increase the height of the base so that i could put more substrate in it if i needed to and um that's pretty much it so one of the first things that i had to determine was whether or not I could get this top off. It does have screws on it. I'm hoping that it's not glued on here somehow. I don't see any residue along the edges, so I'm pretty sure that it does not. So it's being held together by the screws. I'm also hoping that when I unscrew it, that this is not gonna be loose and not stay together very well. But even if it does, um, they're just screws, so I can actually replace the screws, maybe put some bigger screws in there to hold it on a little bit tighter. So, you know, it's still open for modification if I have to 
but my main concern is just making sure there's no glue holding that on. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws. And just like that, it comes off. So I purchased a small tube of silicone, clear silicone, that I'm going to use to silicone the bottom. I got a small tube because I didn't feel like I needed a huge one. Hopefully it'll be enough. If not, then I'll have to buy some more to finish the job. But I'm going to go ahead and silicone the bottom. So I'm going to start out by applying a thin line across the glass down here at the bottom. here. I'll go ahead and spread that around a little bit with my finger to complete the seal. And use the rest to go ahead and seal the wood on the bottom. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and spread some more along the bottom, around the corners, making sure I get the wood. And then once again, I'll just spread it with my fingers. Making sure I'm sealing everything. Then I'll spread a little bit more along the base. And that's what I'll use to seal the aluminum down here, or tin, whatever it happens to be. And I just have to make sure that I give it a nice even spread so that there's no metal showing that the silicone is completely covering the metal. And uh, all I have left to do now is just let it dry. So it's a new day. Um, I had to let the silicone dry on the bottom of my enclosure here, my lantern. And uh, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some plexiglass and I'm gonna cut a strip of this plexiglass that I can use to put on the bottom here just to give the lantern a little bit of depth so that I can put some substrate in there and it's not going to come spilling out the door. So um, I have to measure the top basically and um, go from there I'm just going to mark my plexiglass and go cut it. So I have to go in here and with my ruler I'm going to measure and it's basically from the glass 
on one side to the glass on the other side and I'm going to mark my ruler. I'm kind of eyeballing this because there's a little bit of depth in there and uh, I can't get right in there so it's going to be pretty close and if I'm too long I'll just trim it a little bit more. So I figure about an inch would be good for the lip there and I'm just going to use the ruler which is basically about an inch tall and just draw myself a line across that'll be my cutting line and then I will mark about where I'm going to cut it across. Alright, so I've got my area marked. That's going to be the lip on my door to hold in the substrate. got my piece of plexiglass cut out and it ended up being more trouble than I thought it was going to be. Um, I figured I'd measure it out and cut it with my bandsaw but when I was cutting it with the bandsaw it ended up snagging and it chipped off a big old piece and left a nice jagged edge on it. So um, I ended up having to do it with a utility knife and that gave me a much smoother cut. So live and learn. And uh, then I thought about gluing it in there and I figured oh I'm just going to use silicone, um, the same silicone that I used to seal it to put this in place but then I remembered that silicone does not stick to plexiglass so I had to make a late night run to the store and get myself some um, super glue and I figured super glue would work just fine cyanoacrylate sticks to plexiglass just fine and it will also stick to wood so um, that's what I'm going to use okay I don't know how well you can see in here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a small bead of glue along the inside on both corners where I want my plexiglass to stay. So I'll put that right in there and let it sit. And let the glue do its thing. Okay, so I've got my plexiglass glued in place, and uh, there it is right there. So there is a little bit of a gap down here, but that's okay because the substrate's not going to come up through there. And uh, it's given me enough of a rise here so that I can put substrate in here and not worry about it spilling out the door. And I've taken the liberty of going ahead and cutting out a screen mesh. Um, I originally thought about maybe putting plexiglass there. I know people are concerned about um, tarantulas getting their feet caught in the screen mesh. I've never had that problem, especially not with arboreals, so I'm not really concerned about it. Um, what I was concerned with is that if I put plexiglass here, it would add too much thickness between the lid and the wood, and the screws wouldn't go back in properly. So um, not to mention I would also have to drill holes, and I'd have to drill holes precisely where the screws would go in. So it would present too much of a problem for me to put plexiglass on here. Um, so I decided to go ahead and with the screen mesh, and you know, it, it is a little bit of a risk, but honestly I don't think it's going to be a problem. So I went ahead and cut it out and then I pre-measured or I measured it and made it to where it fits exactly on top of the the, uh, the lantern here. And uh, all I have to do is put my lid back on and make sure that my screws are lining up where they're supposed to or my screw holes and then go back in and 
reinstall the screws. Now it is a little bit more difficult to see where the holes are because the mesh is now covering that up but hopefully if I start screwing in the uh, screw will find the hole and bite in. And it did. So I'm going to go corner to corner and that way it'll go easier. Just like that the screws are back in place nice and secure um, I am a little bit concerned because there is a bit of a gap in between the screws now and the lid I was careful not to over tighten because again this wood is soft and uh, if I over tightened it then it would probably strip the wood inside there and the screws wouldn't hold so well um, I may if I decide that it's not strong enough maybe put some some a little bit of a bigger screw in there uh, or a longer screw just so that I get a tighter fit and I don't have to worry about this lid coming off but it really doesn't seem to be going anywhere so I've got a nice screen mesh there and uh, the lid is secure and I don't have to worry about escape so technically I have an enclosure right here the only thing left is to decorate it and put a tarantula in it Okay, now that my enclosure is ready, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, cocoa fiber substrate in the bottom. I've got that right here. Since I'm putting an arboreal in here, I don't need tons and tons of cocoa fiber, so I'm just going to spread a little bit around, and that should be good enough. Got a piece of cork bark here. I'll put that on the side. And a little bit of greenery to brighten it up. Alright, and that's pretty much it. The only thing that I need now is to put a tarantula in there. But there's one last thing. Uh, there was one thing about this lantern that kind of bothered me, and that's this extra space right up here. Um, I was like, well, you know, I've got this extra space. What can I do with it? I mean, I know it's good for ventilation there, but what exactly can I use it for? Can I use it for something practical? So I had the idea that I would buy some of these string lights. These are LED string lights and they're battery operated. So I figured maybe if I stuck those in there, I could have an enclosure that has its own light source and I can turn it on whenever I want to look inside. So, you know, I, I figured it was worth a try. So I'm going to give it a try and see what I can do with that. Now these lights are used for decorating small things. Sometimes people put them in mason jars as decorations. Um, the battery pack's a little large, so I figured I could probably hide it in the back somewhere or maybe even just stick it to the glass on the back um, with some um, adhesive strips or something like that. But my main concern is getting this wire into that area so that it'll stay in there and pretty much form my light source. Okay, so I figure my best bet is to maybe wind it around my fist like this. 
make a nice loop with it. And I want this to stick out the back. So my door is here. So I'm basically just going to tuck this in right in there. Just like that. I don't know. Kind of messy, I guess. I just figured I'd give it a try. And once I've got it, I can even tuck it in there. And there it is. It's got its own light source. So, I don't know. Maybe not a whole lot of light, but still a light source and I can look at my tarantula. Maybe too much light is, is bad for it anyway and it'll run away. So this way it might not be too scary for it and it'll still stick around and give me a chance to look at it. Okay, so the part you've been waiting for, what kind of tarantula am I going to put in here? Um, I've got a Pisilotheria suffusca that um, I've been wanting to rehouse. They've gotten some size on them. I've been keeping them in these little things. And I hate these containers. They make great containers for arboreals, for small arboreals. But the fact that it's opaque, it makes it hard to see. Um, these guys are really shy. I hardly ever see them. So I figured I'd get them in an enclosure where I can actually start to see them and observe them a little bit better. Um, these guys are probably my shyest tarantulas that I have. And as far as Pacillotheria species, um, as far as I'm concerned, they, they are probably one of the most shy Pacillotheria species that I own. Um, so let me go ahead and put that and rehouse that in its new enclosure. And hopefully this will go without a hitch. And they tend to be very, very stubborn. Um, they don't like to come out of their enclosure at all. Yeah, it's gone straight into its little hide. So what I'm probably going to have to do is take the little cork bark that I have in there and uh, pull that out with the tarantula in it and then hopefully coax it out once I get it in the enclosure. So give me a sec. I've got to get some tweezers real quick. Okay, I'm back. I've got my tongs. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove the cork bark, tarantula and all. Whoop. Maybe not. All right. I think we got it. Okay. So I'll put that in there. And hopefully we can coax it out the other end and get a good look at it. Whoops. Come on. And there you see it's gotten some pretty decent size on it, which is why I wanted to rehouse it. And there it is. and immediately it runs to the back. Let me see if I can get a good view on it. All right, and there it is. Nice and secure in the cork bark. And now I can observe it whenever I want to instead of having to dig it out and look in that opaque enclosure. So that's it for my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to buy Tarantula Haven merchandise, I put a link in the description below. Any of the proceeds that come from merchandise um, will go to support and grow this channel. So until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.